G'day, it's James here. I hope you're all going well. I've got another video about the dimmer, just one this time. I've got myself a Voltex dimmer here. It's a 300 watt dimmer, trailing edge, for designed for LED lights. And it comes in this little box here. And it's got a seven year warranty, which is pretty impressive. It comes with a black and a white knob. And you're probably wondering why I'm looking at a dimmer that's just an ordinary rotary dimmer when I do videos about home automation and electrical installations. And this is not particularly smart. Well, I'm gonna take it apart and have a look inside. There's something that I wanna try and do with this dimmer possibly that I might be able to test out. Um, so that's the plan, is to take it apart. And I don't encourage you to take one apart. I'm gonna do it on your behalf. And I'm pretty confident that I'm about to lose my seven year warranty because it's gonna be very apart. But just before we take it apart, we're gonna try it out. And we'll have a quick look at the data sheet. And it's a 300 watt dimmer. It's got a minimum load of three watts. It's good for LED lights, incandescent halogen lights with electronic transformers. It's no good for uh, non-dimmable loads, of course, and for iron core transformers. So iron core transformers need leading edge dimming and no good for motors and mixed type loads. So you can't mix the brands of lights together, but that's, that's most down dimmers don't like having light mixed together so it's a good idea to have the same brand and same type of light on one circuit and it's got a thermal cutout and it's got a little bit here about off-peak ripple signal injection some power suppliers put a, a signal in the mains line to signal off-peak to turn off off-peak device to turn on off-peak devices on and it helps them smooth out the um, load on the network and that signal can affect dimmers and downlights and cause flickering. But this says it has uh, it has a filter built into it, but it still may impact it if the ripple is amplitude is increased. So it does address it somewhat. I don't think we have a problem with that where I am, but that's what it says. And we have a look here on the back. We've got some settings we can actually set with this dimmer because it's actually got a rotary encoder in here and it's also got a push button facility. And it says here that we can actually turn the push button off so you don't have a push button and have a, a remote switch instead. So like so, we can have the dimmer and a, and a switch mechanism. And we can adjust the minimum, minimum dimming level. At the moment it comes default to 20%. So you can change that and make it higher or you can make it lower. You can enable the dimmer back um, backlight. If you look in here, there's four little LEDs which are blue in color. And when the, the dimmer, the light is turned on, the lights are bright. When the light is off, the lights are 50%, so they're dull, but it remains on. But here you can actually um, enable it. So it always stays on. And you can actually disable it so that it goes off, so you can turn it off. And you can clear the dimming level, so you make it zero. And you can set it back to factory func defaults. And the last one is the power up mode. So when it powers up, you can have it so that it's off, or you can have it so that it's on. So it comes default is on, so that means when the power is isolated, and you turn it back on, it'll come on in the on state. So you need that if you have a, an additional switch connected to it. But they're all settings you can change just by pressing the button a number of times. Let's try it out. So I've just got one down light connected to it, just this light here. And you'll see that if we turn it down, cheap. first. All right, let's try it out now. So I've just got one down light connected to it here. And if we turn it right down to lowest, that's 20% because that's what the default is. Now, if you wanted to adjust that, 
but you can clear it by doing it seven times. And I believe that the light will fl flash. So it flashes there. And now, now it will go down low and the light will cut out, I think. Hmm. I'll try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. So we've got that down to basically off. Until it cuts out. Now if we have that if we have it off, we can turn the light off and on at the switch and it will come back on. And we can use this push button to turn it off and on. And if it's off and you turn it, it comes on. You turn it off, you turn it and it comes on. So that's how it works. So that works perfectly fine. You can see that it is a trailing edge dimmer here on the screen. And it doesn't quite get to 100% because it's a two-way device. Now it's time to take it apart and see what we can do with the insides of this thing. And have a look too while we're there. Okay, I'm gonna take this apart and I'm not actually gonna say why, but you're welcome to try and guess why I would wanna take this apart. Let me know you down in the comments what you reckon I would want to take this apart for. So if we, as we take it apart, you will see that it has protection around the top because it is at mains potential and that is a metal metallic part here, which is probably connected to mains in some way. So it needed to be insulated so that you can never get anything in there to touch it. So that's why it's got all that insulation around there and shielding. So we've got our connection wires on the back here. Move this stuff out of the way. So So we've got our rotary encoder that has the two pins here for the push button. And we've got A and B in the common just here to tell which way it's turning. And we've got a whole lot of circuitry here, which I don't know what it does yet. And the heat sink here for the MOSFETs. And the casing actually has a a vent on it, which is covered by the sticker, which is a bit weird. So to take this apart, we're going to have to desolder this. And here, and here. So that's the MOSFET inside, sorry, the IGBT just there. Came out pretty easy. And we've got an uh, MOV for surge protection, suppression. Yeah. And it's just like the it's like the ones we've got in here it's same size and what's this thing here is that a thermal cutout it's a thermal cutout I believe
an F824 EST. Let's look that up. This is a microchip. Pick. This is a pick controller. Huh. It actually is a microcontroller on here. It doesn't have an internal oscillator. And it is low power it doesn't have much in the way of a power supply. Just got this. Looks like a bridge rectifier of some sort. And we've got a this is probably the power supply side. So that must have the instructions programmed in it to do all those functions and to do the zero crossing detection and control the, the gate on the MOSFET. On the IGVT, sorry. I wonder if I can claim warranty now. Say there's something wrong with it, it's not working. And that is what happens when you put a Voltex switch into a clipsal plate. It's a little bit too tight and it wrecks the clips. Well, that's it. That's it for today. If you can work out why I might want to take this apart, let me know in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Bye.